Okay, so now we are at the next se section, bladzij 81 to 83. Um, remember in the previous section we read about Lucas who was running away, Ilias having found him, and uh, Lucas kind of going through this existential crisis of not knowing who the people around him is because he was never actually told who they are. And of course remember, um, I don't think at that stage Lucas really accepted the fact that Elias and Bartha are his new mother and father and all of those things. The last question that Elias asked him then was, wie is your sister? And then Lucas answered, the Mexicans. Okay, remember we spoke about Mexicans before. He said Mexicans is the name that he um, he gave Nina, ne? Her, her nickname basically. Okay, so let's read the section and then we'll answer. Oh, then we'll explain. So Lucas said the Mexicans, what's her name? Nina. For elke antwoord het hy om my hou gegeen. Wie, en wie is jy? Ben je Lucas. Lucas wie? Ek weet nie. Lucas van Rooyen. Sê dit. Lucas van Rooyen. Sal jy nou inkry met jou nonsens? Ja. Ja wie? Ja pa. Hulle staan op en terwijl die lichte verdof beweeg Elias en Lucas van die verhoog af. Doof die lichte uit. Misiek lichte op die huis, is, ach, die huis in die bos. Elias kom by die deur in. Bartha sê dan. Elias, kijk hoe lijkt die kind. Lucas, ik wil die blok wat jij nou aanvoer kan verkoop. Hoor, het jy my gehoor, Lucas? Nina kan nie stil sit, nie? Sy is op en af, nes sy bobbe jaan aan het touw. Ja, ja wie? Ja, pa. Moe nie dat ek jou weer moet vraag nie. Pa, ek wil, Nina kry eind met jou wil. Ek wil buiten toe gaan. Sit op jou gat en sit stil. Lucas loop uit, Elias kyk vir Willem en Christoffel en hulle achtervolg hom. Nina kry eind met jou wil. Pa, ek wil gaan pie. Nou sê jou ma moet saam gaan. Nina glip ongemerk uit. Het jy my nie gehoor nie, Bartha? Ek het gesê, moet saam, sy moet saam met jou uitgaan. Sy was te lang op die ster, Elias. Sy was gewoond om elke dag bos te loop en om te speel. En, het ek, en ek het jou gesê, dit gaat eind kry. Die bos is niet een plek voor een meisje kind alleen nie. Pauze, hy neem die osrim en staan op. Waar bly sy? Ek sal gaan soek. Elias ergerlik, zodat so ik ek jou weer moet loop soek. Reen begin val, ons hoor nie na buiten fluit. Wanneer nie na op die verhoog kom, skree sy al voor die eerste hou val. Elias vol haar en slaan haar. Sy skree terwijl sy aan die stoele en die tafel en oor die kooie probeer wegkom. Willem, Christoffel en Lucas het ingehaard lip. Willem keer by die deur, Christoffel by die venster. Bartha keer vir die kaars en die skottel op die tafel. Lucas druk sy hande oor sy oore, maar het hou aan en aan. Houwe en geskree hou aan totdat Nina neersak en net huil. Elias skree, Bring die skaar, Vandaag is die dag wat ek met hierdie maaksel klaar maak. Die skaar wil nie knip nie, Elias. Gee dan een mes. Alright, so. Ehm... Um, Good. So we've done all the part about who is who and all of those things and like I said for every answer that Lucas gives, Elias gives him a hiding. Um, then Elias asks him who he is and he starts off by saying Benjamin because that is who he is. He hasn't gotten used to the idea that he is now Lucas and not Benjamin. But as he is starting to say this, he realizes that if I'm going to continue saying this, there's going to be issues. So he changes halfway, saying Lucas. Lucas V, again he says, ek weet nie, because up to now no one has told him what his surname is. And then he says, Lucas van Rooyen said it, and he says that, and then Lucas, uh, Elias asks, will you get an end with your nonsense now, meaning will you stop being the way that you've been up to now? And Lucas answers, ja, now. This is kind of a cultural thing. Um, we've spoken about this in class as well, especially when we were discussing things like essays and di the dialogues and all of those things. In Afrikaans cultures, if you address your mother or your father or your uncle or whoever, you must acknowledge who they are. So you're not going to say, if mom calls you to do something, you're not going to say, ya, ja. you're going to say, ya ja, ma. Um, I remember my own mother, even with the, the grandchildren these days, 
if they answer just ya and when we answer just ya then she always said ya und meaning yes dog because that's how you would talk to a dog or something like that you're not talking to your mother like that you're going to address her ya ma ya oma ya tani ya whatever okay so that's why Elias then says ya v and Luca says ya ba okay they then leave we get to the house and Barta is shocked that's why we see this Elias Keiko like Dikin so the use of the ellipse there is kind of to indicate her shock all right Elias then tells um, Lucas that he needs to make sure that the wood he's working with is good enough because he wants to sell it then there's a pause because Lucas did not answer him and then he says again did you hear me and then Lucas says ya and again ya vi ya ba so show of respect so again Elias is forcing his respect by being aggressive okay Nina on the other hand can't sit still she's up and down just like a baboon on a rope then Elias says to um, Lucas do not let me ask you that again in other words don't ask me to to repeat this question Yavi because then again problems will happen Nina wants to ask something but Elias doesn't care he says just stop moving then she says again I want to go out Elias says sit on your ass and be quiet then Lucas leaves and Elias looks at Willem and Christoffel and they follow him why do you think Willem and Christoffel needs to follow him because Elias is again scared that Lucas will be running away okay so they need to look after him and make sure that he does not try to run away again Nina is still moving around so Elias tells her again can I end with your wool and then she says dad I need to go and pee so Nina um, Elias says your mother needs to go with you again why must the mother go with because last time that Nina was away by herself or with Lucas that um, she taught or told him which way to go so again he doesn't want Nina to go out because she's going to be playing in the forest and all of those things Nina then slips out unnoticed and when Elias does notice that he then turns his aggression towards uh, Barta because now he says Barta didn't you hear me Barta I said you have to go with her then Barta tries to cover for her saying she's been too working too long on the scaffolding Elias she's used to being in the forest the whole day and Elias says I told you that will get an end um, the forest is no place for a girl then he takes the Osrim and asks Vablaisem or in other words um, Nina is go uh, away from Ili from the house longer than what Elias would like Barta says I will go look for her and then Elias rather upset aggressively says oh so that then I have to go and look for you again so he's treating his wife the same way that he treats his children with total and utter disrespect being very aggressive towards all of them using his aggression and his force um, to to get their respect then the rain starts to fall we can hear Nina whistling outside so she did not go to the bathroom she was just going out to play and then when Nina gets back to stage she starts screaming before the first beats fall meaning before the first or before Ilya starts beating her she starts screaming already because she knows oh now I am am in trouble Elias follows her where she goes and he beats her so again we can see Elias's aggression here she's screaming and throwing chairs and everything why is she doing this um, she's trying to get away she's trying to put stuff in the way of Elias so that he can't follow her and then Willem and Christoffel and Lucas comes into the house because they're probably worried what the hell's happening Willem then we can see is following in Elias's footsteps because he's blocking the door he doesn't want his sister to get out Christoffel does the same because he's blocking the window doesn't want the sister to go out and Barta instead of trying to protect her child is just standing there holding the candle and the dish that's on the table so that it doesn't fall over poor Lucas can't handle this he puts his hands over his ears but it continues and continues and the beating and the screaming continues until Nina finally falls flat on her face 
and just lies there crying. Then Elias is screaming and he says, bring me the scissors. What he wants to do here, you'll see the next session, uh, section um, as the lights go off, basically what Elias is doing is he's cutting Nina's hair. Now, once we are done with the book and all of those things and we're going to do the video just to give you an idea of what the characters and things look like, you'll see that um, that uh, uh, um, Nina has extremely dirty, extremely bushy hair. It really looks like, you know, those characters and where the wild things are. It's really very bad. But in any case, so Nina, um, in this case, then um, her hair is being cut. So Barta says that the scissors are blunt. They're not going to cut the hair. And so he says, give me a knife, which again shows aggression. Because if you can't even sharpen an, a, a pair of scissors before you try and do something, then you're going to cut someone's hair with a knife. I mean, that is terrible. And especially a little girl like poor old Nina. Okay, so we'll continue then in the next session.